Our ground forces have not come under attack from enemy air forces since the Korean War. This is because the United States has been able to maintain air supremacy, providing the freedom of action required by the joint warfighter to emerge victorious on the battlefield. However, for the first time, our claim to air supremacy is in jeopardy. Over the past several decades, our potential adversaries have closely followed both our technological advances and employment doctrine. These countries have implemented developmental programs to specifically counter our current capabilities. Pervasive threats, modern ground-based air defenses, has reached unprecedented lethality. Our overwhelming success in Desert Storm highlighted the inherent vulnerabilities of our adversaries' defenses. Since then, there has been a global revolution to modernize air defense systems. At the heart of this threat is the service-to-air missile, or SAM. Both Russia and China are producing state-of-the-art SAMs. Shown are several systems that are currently fielded that directly challenge our bid for air supremacy. These modern systems can engage as many as a dozen targets simultaneously at ranges in excess of 100 miles. Furthermore, they are not tied to a prepared site. They are highly mobile, allowing them to relocate in minutes rather than hours or days. To illustrate the dynamics of the SAM threat, here is the threat ring posed by a Vietnam-era SA-2 SAM. It's located on the Washington Mall with its short-range coverage. Now we add the SA-10 and the SA-20 system, one very similar to the one being deployed in Iran, you can clearly see the dramatic increase in ranges. Next we add the SA-21, which is currently being deployed in Russia. And finally, Russia's fifth generation SAM will be capable of engaging targets as far away as Charlotte and Buffalo. As you can see, these systems are being proliferated globally in battalion strength, and we expect this trend to continue. The proliferation of these lethal double-digit SAMs is currently one of the most significant challenges. The Taiwan Strait is an excellent example of the impact of air defense modernization. In 2000, China had only a handful of legacy SAM systems deployed opposite Taiwan offering limited coverage and allowing freedom of movement along most of the coastline. Over the past few years, China has been steadily deploying modern SAM systems. You can see the significant change in coverage. We expect continued expansion of this defensive barrier. The air defense threat is not restricted to land. These same systems are being deployed on board their ships, extending the air defense umbrella well over Taiwan. Looking at today's notional Chinese air defense umbrella on the strait, it is redundant, extensive, and survivable, creating an environment that would be extremely difficult, if not impossible, for fourth-generation fighters to penetrate or defeat. Moving on to the air threat, the production and proliferation of advanced fighters provides capabilities equal to or surpassing our legacy fight. Our potential adversaries are making equally significant strides. One only has to look at the trend in aircraft development over the past 30 years to see where our legacy systems are being overtaken. Said another way, 20 years ago, our qualitative edge was matched with the appearance of the Russian Su-27 flanker. Today, our legacy fighters are being outmatched by the latest Russian and Chinese fighters. Russia is at the forefront of advanced fighter technology development. Both their MiG and Sukhoi fighter programs continue to push the envelope. Likewise, China is rapidly moving forward with significant aerospace developments based on improvements to existing foreign technologies. China currently sustains three major indigenous fighter programs that have integrated enhanced technology.
Both Russia and China are ready and willing to export these fighters to anyone willing to pay for them. You can clearly see the extent of the proliferation problem. It will only get worse. One can easily see how these fighters are closing the gap in terms of capabilities. Over time, their advantage will continue to overtake ours as more advanced technologies are fielded. The heart and soul of these fighters is their radar. They are modern pulse Doppler, look down, shoot down systems with anti-jamming features. They can simultaneously track up to 10 targets and engage four with advanced missiles. In the air-to-air -air missile arena, we have traditionally held the high ground in the beyond visual range fight with our AIM-120 AMRAAM. That has all changed. China has fielded an AMRAAM class missile of their own, designated PL-12. Russia is also fielding similar missiles. One can see the parity plus the Chinese have reached with the PL-12. Both China and Russia are also developing follow-on missiles with significantly increased range performance. They are outpacing us in the missile arena and can directly challenge our AMRAAM superiority. Enhancing our adversary's first shot capability is their rapid integration of modern jammers specifically digital radio frequency memory or DERFM based jammers. These jammers can capture and replicate at high speed our air intercept radars. It can return a false signal leaving our fighters blind at the most critical moment of the fight. Again, both Russia and China are fielding DERFM systems that can deny any first launch capability. Bottom line, the size of the stick no longer matters. This technology has shifted the first shot advantage into the adversary's court. Some of these fighters are equipped with very advanced Russian engines that incorporate thrust vectoring technology. This technology provides significant and dynamic maneuverability and turning capability. The F-15C is no longer the world's premier air superiority fighter. No matter how you look at it, Russian and Chinese advanced flanker variants have achieved parity or surpassed many of the Eagle's technological advantages. The threat does not stop here. Russia recently conducted the maiden flight of its Su-35, a fourth generation plus plus fighter that will clearly bridge the gap between their current fourth generation and future fifth generation fighters. The SU-35 will incorporate numerous fifth-generation fighter attributes, such as a passive ESA radar, high-power jammer, ultra-long-range air-to-air missiles, and supercruise engines with thrust vector control. We also expect it to incorporate plasma stealth technology. This fighter... Our potential adversaries, fifth-generation fighters, are on the horizon. Russia's future fighter is designated the Pack fa China's contender is called the XXJ or F-12 fighter. Both of these fighters will likely be exported at prices that undercut the F-35. Future clients will be purchasing very advanced fighters with near F-22 capabilities in quantities rivaling F-35 production estimates. This comparison clearly illustrates how the Su-35 is bridging the threat gap. By adding the PAC-FA and the XXJ, you can see how their developing fighter programs are challenging F-22's dominance. Bringing it all together, we face significant challenges across the board. When taken in total, our potential adversaries can create an impenetrable box that our legacy fighters cannot enter, thus denying us air supremacy. Without air supremacy, we lose the most powerful edge we hold on the modern battlefield today. These challenges will only grow as our qualitative and quantitative edge continues to ebb. Remember, there is no prize for second best. <laughs>